again, my friends. Still in the first year of this Patreon, and we're going to talk about death once again. But remember that death is just the new beginning, and possibly the beginning of some new painting techniques. I'm working on the Death Elemental from Creature Caster, very stylish, detailed figure. It can be intimidating, but of course with the, the right approach, anything is possible. So in this series, I'll be breaking it all down. Um, stage one, I'm working on the skin. We're doing some necrotic flesh. We've seen this before on the dragon from Creature Caster, but we're putting a different spin on it this time. There are just so many ways to reimagine rotted flesh tones. So that's what we'll be doing today. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get busy. <sighs> flesh of death. Okay, on the palette, I have Vallejo Black, Exile Blue, Thornwood Green from P3, Ushtabi Bone from GW, Liquid Text Titanium White, Black, Blue, Olive, Ivory, White. These are my main ingredients. I want this, uh, he's coming out of this Tempest of Souls, so I want to include a bit of Exile Blue, so it appears that he's being created out of that blue smoky material and then I want that to change as it moves and becomes more and more real into undead flesh. So to start off I'm taking some broad strokes. I've got my three color mixture here of deep blue, olive green, and black. Let's bring a small amount ivory into play, keeping that concentrated on these upward facing angles. We will get more detailed as we go, but for now, working in broad strokes using my largest brush, using the side of that to manipulate as much of this surface area at one time as I can. Uh, let's go a little greener as we move upwards. A little more lively, but you know, not too much more. Just the right amount of living. And the thing with wet blending is I can keep adding, I can keep balancing. This chest is a little too blue for my taste right now. I want more green involved. So I will add just that, just looking at it, looking at the model in its larger shapes. It has a lot of wonderful detail sculpted in place. Thanks, Creature Caster. But for now, I'm looking at areas like each pectoral as kind of its own piece, its own segment of the model. Just breaking it down into more basic shapes before I get caught up in all those lovely lavish details. All right, let's bring up the top part of this abdomen, just like so. Thinking things can get a little muddy as you're wet blending. Just go and go. Maybe you end up adding too much of an ingredient or making soup or something. Don't be afraid to let it dry. You don't have to rush through this. You can do multiple passes of wet blending until you're satisfied. I've never lost any detail on the model from laying too much paint down. That is certainly possible, but realistically speaking, the only time I've, I've really lost any piece of the sculpt to paint was paint that came out of a rattle can. Alright, we'll add a little more green to his gills there, kind of pulling out these awesome side abs. We could all be as we could all aspire to be as fit as death. 2021, that's our year. You see the basic setup here, the control of the volume. Got a nice rancid undead flesh tone going. I'm going to spread this out over the rest of the fleshy areas and we will get back and do a little more detail. 
Okay, try it out. Back in action. You can see on my palette I've added a little bit of Sanguine Bass. He has this uh, contraption holding his abs together and or apart. Maybe this is some kind of uh, bow flex for your torso. Yes, very funny. Whatever it is, it's irritating. So I just want to glaze a bit of the Sanguine Bass in place. This could get covered later on, but still, it's just uh, good to start building this in, layering things in early. It'll still be showing through in a, in a very faint amount, like I have more glazing to do, as we're about to get to, but just start building that red irritation in along the way as we're starting to commit more shadows and such to the torso. All right, let's take Thornward Green, Ushtabi Bone. More, more, more. So I have a very, very bright take on this Thornwood Green. Just going to go start pulling some of this texture out before I start layering over it. Might as well just give it all a quick touch. Just paying attention to the volume. I don't need to use maximum bright ivory in these lower areas. But as I move upwards, I'll start using pure ivory. Highlight these areas of his abs that are somehow facing the sky. Just like so. And as his ribs are protruding a little bit here, kind of bring that out, but trailing off appropriately but generally I'm going to apply a very quick whip of textured highlights you can see my brush is just kind of going parallel with all of these all these textures it's really fun to work with the texture on a sculpt and just kind of move your brush strokes in the same direction as the skin here and there I'm creating some irregularities that may not be sculpted in place but the texture is also helping to guide my brush and I'm also looking where I'm aiming I'm not just blindly swiping across the surface I do have a direction in mind but just consider moving your brush in the same shape of the uh, texture that the surface is taken on Here he floats after a pass of textured highlights. Now to glaze down again, mixing up some of that original base color. And again, I'm looking at all of these shapes in their more rudimentary form. It's kind of a basic geometric shape, breaking the pectoral into its own object. Larger volumes of the the abdomen, we kind of have these side pieces, the middle of the tummy. And to give you a better idea of what these glazes look like, everybody's favorite star of the show, Cube of Learning. So I, I haven't added any more paint to my brush, but you see how faint that is. When I start out, I start blending on the model, it's, it starts a little heavier, but that one brush load I carry that across many different areas, get a lot of mileage out of the, that thin glaze, So and, and just filtering things because I want it to work into the texture, I want the texture to be showing through, kind of 
enveloping these highlights, layering shadows in place, bringing highlights back up till things look just right. Got that dark tone in place, let's get some of the thornwood green, this kind of olive color. And just kind of throw that into the mid-tones, filtering down, working with the texture, just like so. Another very, very thin amount. And slowly, all that wet blending that may have been kind of rough is now becoming a little more solid and secure. Of course, playing with the irregularity is part of the game here, especially on an undead figure. I'm going to let that dry, hit it one more time. Let's also keep bringing along that abdominal irritation. It adds a nice spot color to all of the cold and dead tones around this model. I'll be bringing <clears throat> I'll be bringing a lot of that blue magic into place as well. I think the inside of his mouth and eyes must be coursing with power. His hand will be encased in that flame. Let's even take a little bit of this red tone. Let's bring some in not across his whole face, but just kind of on the lower part of his cheekbones. Just like so. Maybe where the, the jaw meets up. Keep in mind acrylic colors desaturate as they dry. So it's important to work in many layers. As this dries, it'll become more and more faint. So we want to do everything in at least three layers, I would say. It's a general recommendation before you see a pleasing, passable result. And here he is a few blends later. Before I go any further, I want to block out the abdominal stretcher. This is going to be painted up in a non-metallic metal black, as uh, far as I'm imagining right now. But in order to separate this from the rest of the figure, as we add the finishing steps, I'm just going to black this in for your viewing pleasure. All right, there it is. Final round, the rendering. Let's go back with our pure ivory, Ushtabi bone, very, very lightly and slightly pulling out these textures one more time. And one by one, as we were talking before about looking at the basic geometric shapes, saving all the hairy details for a later stage, this is that stage. Past all the rough rendering, and now the fun part get to cap off all these blends and highlights. Remember to not uniformly highlight all the way down. I don't want to carry these ivory highlights through every shadow and volume. If I do, I'll at least greatly reduce the amount. But in the best case, I'm mixing a deeper version Again, Thornwood Green plus Ushtabi Bone. That's an olive green added to an ivory. We're just adding one final skin. And yes, oh yes, none whiter, none brighter than that Liquitex Titanium White. I'll be keeping these highlights located mainly on the face and just the upper torso. Very, very small amounts. 
bringing everything up to that final white dot or slash. You must exercise control at this stage. It looks very nice adding this little white cap to all of these blends, but just keep in mind that more distant view that we still want to have a certain level of volume as we go up the model. I want the brighter colors, the brightest highlights to be located around the face and the shoulders. Everything is a gradient. Just think of it all as a series of gradients, even your gradual progression of highlights moving up the figure. Just a few dots right up on the eye socket. Oh man, this is always the fun part polishing it off. I want to enjoy this step. It goes quickly. As you're working, you're covering less and less of the model. So naturally those stages go just a little bit quicker. Let's also take one more diluted sanguine base pass. Sweep it in very very slightly if I add too much it's going to lose control pull up in strange ways think of this as just a small sheet of tint I like adding a little extra kind of irritation in the shoulder there up in the armpit on these flanks tend to that bicep vein. He may be an elemental, but he still does curls. It's a good example of controlling that volume, mixing down the color I'm highlighting with. I'll go to it a certain length with that ivory, and then have it a deeper mix as I pass into the shadows. And let's put one tiny white dot right up in here. Maybe no one will even notice it. It's the slightest touch of a highlight. Excellent. It's alive. In death, the chill touch of the final winter awaits us all. Thank you for watching this video and supporting this Patreon. Please let me know your thoughts, concerns, questions, observations in the comments below. I'm always happy to hear from the people that are supporting me on this page. You're exactly the, uh, the audience that I want to hear from, so do not hold back. And although this Patreon has not passed its final year yet, I want to thank you for your support. I started this uh, as the coronavirus started. I had to cancel all of my classes. I had to move to a different house. Life was hard. A lot of things were uncertain. And I didn't assume that this Patreon page would would do well, but it has, and it is my uh, deepest gratitude that I wanted to share with, with everyone who's watching these videos and giving me feedback, and I'm, up, I'm about to go in a circle of happy feelings, but just thank you so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful new year, a time to, to begin something fresh. Let's do it together. I'm out here trying to learn as much as I can, just like you. I'll see you next time.